The way technology evolves is is not because somebody's put a gun onto your head and said evolve. So then you need to shift to electric. That's not how it works. That's the reason electric vehicles haven't gone mainstream. The reasons electric vehicles will become mainstream is because they are definitely better on every parameter worth comparing compared to petrol scooters. Electric vehicles have to be better on performance, on cost, on range, on comfort, on drive quality, on looks, on ergonomics, every parameter. And that's the only reason people will start shifting towards that. So at Ether, we are making smart electric vehicles. And for our first product, we're building the S340, which is a smart electric scooter, uh, much like how Vespa looks and feels like, uh, but it can sort of match the acceleration of Vespa, despite being electric, 100% electric vehicle. Uh, there are a couple of big differentiators are obviously the drivetrain itself and the fact that it's a connected vehicle. It's got a very different interface altogether. It does not have regular analog dials, but it has a seven inch that screen dashboard. Uh, the vehicle has 3G SIM card, it's got connectivity, syncs with your mobile phone, you can track the vehicle. There's a lot of data that gets collected, a lot of analytics that happens, predictive maintenance. Uh, so this will be the first smart vehicle that anybody can buy in the country. We believe, we strongly believe that the more data that you collect, the better, the more deeper insights you will get and that's how any system becomes intelligent. And that's a natural progression for everything that we own. Uh, even initially you start collecting data, then you build in controls and eventually you start building in artificial intelligence for the system to take certain decisions on its own. So uh, that's what we're doing here. We have basically, uh, in every system on our vehicle is, is sort of connected. Uh, all of them have uh, data being uh, stored and all of it comes back to our central servers. This helps us build profiles. We'll have braking data, acceleration data, lean angles, uh, turning, light, throttle, uh, all of a massive quantity of data. What this allows us to do is, is crunch all of this and start understanding how drivers use their vehicles. Uh, do you really use that extra power once in a while? What happens if it rains? Do you start skidding? Uh, what happens for traffic when it's 5 p.m.? What happens to traffic when it's 5, 15 p.m.? It's, it's, it's a lot of very small connections which when all made together can start offering you very, very personalized, contextualized data about your riding experience. So we can start uh, suggesting the most efficient routes. We can start suggesting the most comfortable routes to get to a place. And in future, as we go for more models, we can actually start improving our vehicle significantly because we have data about usage. When Ether starts selling a million electric two-wheelers, uh, rest assured the entire market would have started flipping. We sell 16, 17 million petrol two-wheelers in India today. In the next four or five years, we'll probably be selling 30 million. Uh, when Ether starts selling a million, the remaining 29 would all be on the verge of converging. When a market as large as India starts going predominantly electric, it will have ripple effects. The entire supply chain will start changing. The entire ecosystem uh, will start changing. Battery consumption, motor consumption, cable consumption, all these consumptions go through the roof and they'll have ripple effects across the entire global ecosystem. So anywhere, any two-wheeler that you will see globally will start going electric in the next 10 years. So I think it's it's not about, oh, we should do hardware because there's an imperative or it's, it's important for the environment. I, I think it's just down to it being a massive opportunity. If you play it right, this is, uh, this is potentially a $100 billion opportunity just in India alone over the next couple of decades. So it took you three years to develop the product without having any revenue, right? Yeah. So how do you end all this period? So I think that's that's why it is important to find the right investors because uh, to be fair to many investors, they have little exposure to hardware companies. So it's a little hard to digest the fact that for the first two, three, maybe three and a half years after you put in money, nothing's going to sell, right? It's all going to be developed, 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 tested, 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 and you have no sense of where the market is really headed. So it's a little leap of, leap of faith. Uh, the flip side, however, is if it works, you can grow like crazy. You can go from selling 1,000 vehicles to 10,000 vehicles to maybe a million vehicles within just a matter of a couple of years. So scale is phenomenal. Margins are great. Uh, the ecosystem is very, very mature. The only trick is to basically find long-term, steady, patient investors who are looking for a big outcome. It is very important to find investors who are looking for a big outcome rather than smaller exits. Uh, it is easier to give smaller exits when you have a software company or when you have a company where you do recurring revenue, a lot of revenues, because um, you know after a year, after raising a first round, 
you would have reached maybe 100,000 users. And then you can give an exit, get a new different sort of investor, or maybe even go profitable. That's not really possible with hardware companies. It takes longer. So it's important to find long-term patient investors. The ethos still is, is to focus on the consumer and, and build something which solves a key problem, a core problem. That sometimes might require to build hardware, that sometimes requires us to build software also, consumer applications, whatever, everything. So over the next couple of years, we'll be building more scooters. We will start building bikes. We have already started laying out a charging infrastructure, Ether charging infrastructure. Uh, we are building a lot of subsystems like batteries in-house. So maybe that can be a strong business unit. Uh, and going forward, maybe more vehicles. Uh, for the next five to 10 years, I see us building a lot of vehicles uh, profitably and reaching sustainability in the next couple of years.